So what did you think when you first heard uh, or saw Kanye on this show? Well, first of all, I'm such a huge fan of this show. I watch every episode. Well, let's make some noise back. <laughs> right. And back when when we were at Diddy's Christmas yes. party years That's right. ago, That's right. you got my number and said, yeah. look, I yeah. want you to come on. Right. So I'm finally, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're finally able to work it out. For right. the people to know this, hold on, hold on. I invited this man on the show about two two or three years ago, something like yes, that. Sir. I came up to you, I was so excited early to meet you. Champs. Yeah, early drink champs. Yeah, early drink champs. Right. Because... I truly understand that this is the balance that we need. You yeah, understand what I'm right, saying? If right. we cover a story that um, that wasn't right, right, I wanna I wanna fix it. That's right. so 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 again. Let's, let's let's go back to that. So what did you what, did, what was you getting phone calls? Was people calling you saying, "Man, Kanye West is on your your, your yeah. friend's show"? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You say your man. You know that's the dude you love. <laughs> and what, they, for what, what, what is that stuff? He done cut the con and he got to the yay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, look. Mm. I've known Kanye for a while, so let wow. me put my car straight on the table. Oh, wow. Let me tell you how I came to know Kanye. Wow. So I'm texting Jay, Jay-Z, after <laughs> nice the... Nice no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm trying to floss, but, yeah. but going to get that stuff out your teeth. <laughs> so the, the thing is, is that uh, this is right after the VMAs, right, mm -hmm. when he does the Taylor Swift thing. Okay. Uh, okay. I was in the audience oh, wow. when Kanye did what he did, right? right? And we were all, it was like the Oscars. Is right. that a joke? Is right. that is that arranged? Right. Right. And then afterward, when it went down and he was taking all the heat, I'm texting Jay going, I'm not feeling that. Right. I said, because what Kanye was trying to do in that moment is right. to say black artists have always been appropriated, expropriated, denounced, and then they took all their content and then the gifts that they have have been abused and mm -hmm. then they don't get the recognition for it. They make mm -hmm. the, dom, the dope and bomb albums, mm -hmm. but they don't get the recognition, mm -hmm. right? I'm imagining that night, uh, Little Richard was going like, go ahead, because mm -hmm. <laughs> give me my Grammy, woo, <laughs> right? I bet Chuck Berry was <laughs> like, yo, where with somebody when I deserved a right. Grammy that maybe was given to Elvis. Right. Mm -hmm. So I saw it in the historical context. Yeah, it, he was drunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went up there and did something rude. I love Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, he was representative of a culture that mm -hmm. was tired of being abused. Mm -hmm. So I told Jay, I'm not down with all the hate that's coming to Kanye. He says, do me a favor. You know, send it to my email mm -hmm. and I'm going to send it to Ye, mm -hmm. Kanye. Mm -hmm. So I did the thing. He sent it to Kanye. That's how me and Kanye first met years and years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking back and forth. He done posted some of my stuff, my tweets, uh, texts to him mm -hmm. uh, in public. That's why I don't feel bad about going public now, because God dang. You, 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 ain't, you ain't had asked me, could you post my stuff? So uh, let's have a public conversation, you know? Yeah. So I love, let me be clear. I love him. Mm -hmm. He's a genius. He's extraordinarily talented. But I think uh, dealing with the mental health issues that he confronts, whether he wants to to admit them or not, mm -hmm. that's part of it. Yeah. Another part is that the mental health may exacerbate tendencies that already pre-exist, mm -hmm. that the conditions that underlie, just like when you talk about COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID brings out some of the other stuff that has been hampering right. you, right. high blood pressure, diabetes, mm -hmm. and so on. So in this sense, the mental health issues and struggles that he's been uh, clear and quite transparent about may have also touched off our analysis of some of his politics and ideology that are problematic. He's a genius and a menace. Mm -hmm. He's a genius and a nuisance. Mm -hmm. He's a genius who does extraordinary things, but this ain't his strong suit. Right. Talking about George Floyd right. is not your strong suit. Right. And I know you've been deeply inspired and influenced by Candace Owens, mm -hmm. uh, the conservative uh, right-wing host who lives in, Phil uh, in uh, Nashville like I do. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, who you listening to? Who's your diet? You know, this is not Whole Foods. This is not a grocer that is of reputable stuff. You you getting it from a ghetto grocer. Mm -hmm. And you're pumping that stuff back into the consciousness of the people. Mm -hmm. And it's sounding deeply, profoundly ignorant. Mm -hmm. You know, saying that, well, uh, he wasn't calling his mama. It was his what his girlfriend was called. Regardless, that may have been true. But the point is, he's calling to his mother who had recently died. Mm -hmm. And he's feeling a kinship and intimacy with her. Mm -hmm. And then talking about fentanyl was what caused his death. Bruh. When they did Martin Luther King Jr.'s autopsy at 39 years old, they discovered he had the heart of a 63-year-old man. 
Wow. Now that's my age, so I hope that was pretty damn good. Uh, <laughs> but it's saying for 39, you shouldn't have a 63-year-old heart. Is that what killed him? Course, no, it was the bullet Boy. from James Earl Ray. Right. So Mr. West, brother right. Ye, Kanye, it was the force applied right. by a white supremacist cop. Now whether he had intention to hate black people, mm -hmm. the function of his knee on the neck of George Floyd, despite Floyd saying, I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. Please get up. He was being extremely nice. Uh -huh. He wasn't belligerent. He wasn't nasty. He wasn't vituperative. He wasn't hating. He wasn't cussing the man out. He was saying, I can't breathe. And this man didn't hear him. It was the pressure applied by the knee of Derek Chauvin. And by the way, the black cop who was on his back and the white cop who was on his knees and his torso and the Asian cop who was lookout. That's multiculturalism for you. Right. That's why diversity has to be toward a goal of equality because you can have diversity toward some messed up goals. Right. Kanye West, to me, has an extraordinary platform. He says he wants independent thought. How are you being independent in the circumference of MAGA, in the circumference of Donald Trump? Let me give you another story. I had just written a book, uh, Tears We Cannot Stop, A Sermon to White America. And so I was uh, out in L.A. on book tour, and I come out of this warehouse-looking place where I had done uh, a show, and uh, the brother's standing there, and I, I said, is that Kanye? I said, hey, man, what's going on? Oh, man, what's happening, blah, blah, blah. That's your book sign. Right, it was at my book. It, okay. was at, it, was, it was at a recording of a show that was talking about uh, my book, but he happened to be outside where I was, was coming out. So he told his companion, he said, you know who this is, this is Michael Eric Dyson, blah, blah, blah. And then, he, you know, we talked a bit. This is right after he had, you know, announced his support for Trump. So I went to my car, knock, knock, knock on the window, and it's Jay saying, you know, hey, I'd like to talk to you about what's going on. So for the next half hour, we chopping up. I'm saying, why is it that you, a rhetorical genius, a verbal master, in complete control of an aesthetic expression of hip hop that we hadn't seen in ever, mm. you brought together in the Midwest the soul traditions, digging into the crates to give us a sonic texture that continues to thrive today. It's so dense with blues and with, with R&B and the love ethic of black people. Why would you leverage all of the genius you've created as a result of your own gifts for a man who is mediocre, who is a bigot, who has no concern for any beyond him, who is a lethal narcissist? He says, so what do you think I should do? I said, I think you should distance yourself from him. I don't think that that's something healthy for you. So when he says, you know, people can't think and they can't be independent, who are you independent from? White supremacy is a dominant stream in American society. Mm -hmm. The belief that black people uh, should not say Black Lives Matter, you're wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt, mm -hmm. it might be cute to you, it might be an aesthetic representation of your imagination gone crazy, but the bottom line is we know White Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. That's why we say Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to say something that's apparent. Mm -hmm. When you come to the crib and you got your wife and kids there and you want to be daddy, you ain't got to say, hey, remember, I'm daddy. They already know know you daddy. If you in control, daddyism is in your DNA. But when you announce it, that means it hasn't been made clear. So when we say black lives matter, we're saying that black lives have been disrespected, have been degraded, have been denied access, have been treated as if they were second class citizens. White folk already got the advantage. So you wearing a white lives matter t-shirt may be cute to you, but it's destructive, it's harmful, and it hurts the core of black America in this nation. And for Kanye to say, look, I wanna be independent, I'm for independent thought. Mm -hmm. So let's hold you to account. Mm -hmm. Let's ask you what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's speak about the internet interests and intentions you have by going to Paris, appearing there, radiating a toxic racial identity that has been destructive not only to black people, but to white people too. Whiteness has been a destructive reality for white folk themselves. That's where they're trying to struggle with it as well. So those are some of the things I thought off the top of the dome when I saw that. You, you, you know what's, what, what's, what's, what's crazy is when he first wore the White Lives Matter right. T-shirt, I think that this is how he had left Gap right. and he had went to uh, Fashion Week. Right, right. And I think that I think this is why I think I'm, a, I'm an outsider looking in as an insider looking out. Right. Um, I think he only wore the White Lives Matter to steal the attention away from Fashion Week. Sure. I think he didn't actually think about the people that was hurt by it. I think I think he was just thinking like, you know what? 
now I own Fashion Week. Right, right, right. And and it, and and it's crazy, but he actually got the goal done. If that was the goal, you know what I'm saying? For all the attention to just go to him. Like once that picture got up, you know what but I'm trying to say? Why not say that clearly if that's the goal? Uh, but I mean, if not only that, why not say crackers gonna crack? <laughs> that would have got. Now I don't believe that for those listening, but I'm saying if you're trying to get attention, right. why not say that? Why not say Angela Davis rocks? Why right. not say black suffering needs to be talked about right. like right. pornography? Right. right? There's a right. lot of stuff he could have said. Because right. when you are that person, what you do comes out. So the choice he made, he can't be. He can't escape responsibility for. Right. Because when you said that, if you're only thinking about yourself, that's part of the problem. Right. You claim to be a leader in terms of thought. You claim to be independent, but you are subordinate to a kind of thinking and logic. This is what we mean by white supremacy. It don't mean that every white person hates black people. That's not what white supremacy is. White supremacy is the conscious or unconscious belief in the inherent superiority of one group and the inherent inferiority of all others. So when you're performing that, your own anti-blackness, Kanye, you a black man who's being anti-black. Take, for example, um, Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court. Mm. Now, Clarence Thomas is a dark-skinned black man. Ain't nobody gonna miss that he a Negro. Right. But at the same time, when he opens his mouth, white supremacist ideas, mm -hmm. white supremacist thought, mm -hmm. white supremacist rhetoric, mm -hmm. white supremacist logic is coming out. And then his wife wilding out on the January 6th tip, writing letters and emails to uh, figures within the Trump administration to amp up their resistance uh, to what's going on in this country by stealing the vote and, or saying the vote was stolen. All of this, Kanye, you are buying into that. If you're naive, you're still dangerous. If you're intentional, you're destructive. But regardless of what your intent was, the consequent was horrible. And if he didn't mean it, he could have said by now, you know what? I was tripping. Right. It was a ploy to get right. some recognition. Right. But what I did was destructive. I don't think he believes that. I think he actually meant what he said. And we have to take him at his mm. word.